do want you to take us through some of these uh, extremely powerful images uh, that, that you shot. But in the lead to your Nat Geo piece, um, it says, I never saw hell before, but now I have. W what was it like? Just, just, just paint a picture for us. I mean, it's interesting because the capital of Tigre, Michele, is so deceptively calm and it, there, it sort of life goes on there and there are cafes open and hotels open. And, but the minute you get out of the capital, the roads are pretty barren. Um, there are checkpoints everywhere. Some are manned by Ethiopian troops. Some are manned by Eritrean troops. Um, it's very hard to get anywhere. A lot of the roads are closed. So, for example, uh, I tried to go north, and I could not make it past the third checkpoint. Uh, the road south was also closed because there was fighting toward the south. Uh, so I was able to go west. So it's really just a matter of trial and error and trying to get access to as many different places as you can as a journalist. And let's just talk through some of these images. Uh, the first one is almost like a Pieta. Uh, a father is holding his 15-year-old his daughter who was shot in the face. Just take us through that image and also some of the others which all seem to focus, as much of your work does, on women and, and girls. I mean, it's just so devastating because you have, as in as is always the case with war, it's the civilians who pay the price, right? And so I think in this situation, I went to the pediatric ward and I saw this young woman who was shot in the face. She had been fleeing the fighting. And uh, the real tragedy is that it took her days to get to a hospital because, you know, once someone is injured, it's not like they can just jump in an ambulance and go to the hospital. Often they're not let through checkpoints. The roads are closed. There is no ambulance. They have to try to pay for a minibus. Many people don't have any money. Um, and so it took uh, days for her father to get her to a hospital. She's now completely blind. Um, she was given one surgery. And that's when I saw her. It was sort of right after the surgery. So she will survive, but she's blind and she was in horrible pain. And her father looked exhausted and devastated and has literally been sleeping in bed with her and on the floor next to her for weeks. There's another image that's very powerful where a woman who was raped is covered in a shroud as if she wasn't alive. And that disconnect between uh, being alive and dead and then having to live with, say, a rape is very powerful as well. Take us through that image. Well, one thing that I saw and witnessed, um, you know, with many of the women I spoke to is the fact that rape is pretty rampant. And there are, you know, hundreds of women who are being raped as a weapon of war. Uh, this particular woman, Shawit, her children were made to watch. Uh, she was gang raped repeatedly. Uh, she's HIV positive. She said to the soldiers, please, I'm sick, I'm HIV positive. She actually showed them her medication and, you know, at least use protection. And they did not, they just ignored her. And, you know, I think this is something that is going on. The shame, of course, that comes with being raped is something that these women have to carry. You know, I'm always very protective of the people I photograph and so are the people around them, the counselors that accompany them to these interviews. And, you know, we have to try to find a way to tell their stories in a way that's effective, but to conceal their identity so there's no retaliation either from family members or from other villagers. And one other way you've managed to do that, uh, another woman who was raped, again, a ter terrible story of her being tied to a tree, losing her son, so she's had the sort of double victimization of, of grief and rape, and you just have this extreme close-up uh, in profile, and again, just the, the, the edges, the landscape of her face is just so powerful. I mean, these stories, it, it's, they're so unbelievably heartbreaking. Like, you cannot, I've been doing this over 20 years, and I can never get my head around how evil people can be. And this is a woman who came in. They're so brave for coming in and telling their stories, for sharing their stories with the world. She was tied to a tree for 10 days, raped at will of any of the soldiers who were in that military camp. Her 12-year-old son was kept at her feet and made to watch. She was in and out of consciousness from the trauma, from the pain, uh, the exhaustion. 
And finally, one day she woke up and her son's throat was slit at her feet and he was dead. And she basically lost her mind. And in the, you know, in the middle of the interview, she just uncontrollably started weeping and screaming and crying. And there was, I mean, me and my translator and the counselor, we were weeping alongside her. I mean, I tried to do a video and literally half the video is me sobbing behind the camera. Oh, thank you very much for bringing us 